The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome this morning, whether you're joining us in person or online. Now, as the pruning and tending of gardens is beginning to show its benefits as we see the fruits of our labors, this morning we'll hear from Christ Jesus in his telling of the uh, story of the vine and the branches and his calling to each of us to bear much fruit. But first, as we gather together with Philip and Andrew and all the saints, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all and from no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord Jesus, you raised us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Lord, you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effect, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Reading from the Acts of the Apostle. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace Queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, about whom may I ask you, does the prophet say this is about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Az Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In his love, in this love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be atoning, atoning sacrifice, for, sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfect in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of, of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. 
so we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, and that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for he has done has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brother and sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God who they have not seen. The commandment we also have from the hymn is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. I run, I wonder if any of you can remember playing the game Broken Telephone. At least that's what we called it in Canada. It's a game I'm sure you're familiar with, perhaps by another name. Sadly, it's difficult to play and demonstrate while maintaining social distancing, so I will explain. It's the game where one person stands at the end of a line and whispers a message into the ear of the next person. And that person takes that message and repeats it to the person next to them, and so on and so forth, down to the end of the line. And of course, at the end, the last person repeats what they've heard, which is rarely anything like what the first person said. Communication is all about listening, more so than speaking. Listening to what somebody else is actually saying can always be difficult, in part because we're also thinking about what we know, what we think we know the other person is saying, because we obviously project our own assumptions on their words and on them and on what they are trying to say. But if we can quieten our own minds, 
to hear what somebody else is saying, we can often be surprised. In today's reading from Acts, Philip is sent to one of the roads leaving Jerusalem, and he effectively goes there to listen. A bit like an apprentice or a trainee who's told just to watch and observe. A seemingly pointless task, but Philip trusts the message he's heard from the Spirit. He goes and he watches and listens, and then he's encouraged to go and join in. It's not an aggressive task or something he's imposing. He is partaking in what somebody else is doing. And so he goes and watches and listens and hears the Ethiopian eunuch reading from the prophet Isaiah. And hearing the Ethiopian, Philip asks him about what he is already showing an interest in. Now, the word evangelism can often have certain connotations. It can be considered quite scary by many. Indeed, it is often a word that we associate with a very in-your-face form of Christianity. Preachers telling us that we are doomed on street corners. Of course, John challenges that approach in his letter because he reminds us that God is love. And where there is love true love there is no fear so the gospel is good news if it is good news then the last thing anybody sharing it should be bringing it to the uh, table is fear and in fact the word evangelism actually means good news here philip in this passage from acts demonstrates that proclaiming good news is about good listening it's about partaking in what other people are doing. I have often been surprised by the degree to which people want to know more about faith when I meet them, far more than I would ever suggest that they should be asking me questions. They are the ones who start the conversations. But we are all called to share good news. But we do so not by banging it over people's heads, but by living the good news in our lives in a way that is transparent and inclusive. And as, when, as and when others want to know more, they know where to find it. And they are drawn to it because they feel it, they sense it, they see it in the way that we live. As a church, we are called to be the place and the people, the community in which the love of God can be encountered in Jesus Christ. Many will encounter that love through the events and activities that we have in the friendships people have with each one of you. They will grow to appreciate and value that love which they experience when in contact with us and will be glad to know it is there, though many might consider themselves never to be a part of it. But at some point, Having encountered that love of God, even in a little bit, they will know where and how to find and experience more of it. And that is where we need to be attentive to when people are seeking that love of God in us, to share it in whatever way they are looking for it. Of course, we can convince ourselves that to be part of the church you need to already understand everything. I'm sure that's what people out there think. I'm sure it's what many of us think. That somehow to be a Christian, you have to be completely faultless and all-knowing. We probably often sit here and feel slightly fraudulent. But of course, that's not what being a Christian is. Somehow to be able to answer anybody's question about our faith, we need a doctorate in theology? No, of course not. The Ethiopian had only a short while listening to Philip before he was convinced that he needed to be baptized and become a full member of this church. Before he was con Philip, like all the disciples, 
until the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, struggled to show his face out of doors without denying his knowledge of Christ. And yet, here he is being the one who is proclaiming the good news to this Ethiopian and going on afterwards to continue that work. So, we are called to listen. We are called to be a place and a people where the love of God is encountered. And we are called to respond to those who ask us to show them more. And how do we do those things? How do we prepare ourselves to do any of that? According to Jesus in today's gospel, to do any of this, we need to abide in him as he abides in us and as the father abides in him. When I was doing a bit of preparation for this morning's gospel, I came across a scholar who slightly re-understands this passage. Slightly. He claims that the word that we hear as being vine was originally the word for vineyard. And the word we hear as being branches was actually at the time the word for vine. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference. In a way, it takes everything up a certain level. But in it, you still get that sense that the vine relies on the vineyard for its nourishment for its soil, for the water, even for the sun. And the vines, as you will know, if you've ever seen vines growing, certainly if you've ever looked at ivy, there you go, there's a type of vine, you know it, it intertwines with each other, supporting one another and itself. And so we are the vine, reliant on each other to support and grow as well as reliant on the soil and the vineyard in which we grow. And in this image, to abide in Jesus means also abiding with one another. It means being mindful to the work of God, to the love of God in our lives. So when I look back on a day or a week or a month, and this has happened a number of times over the last several months when I feel like, where is God in all of this? And then I look back and I see that not the things that I planned or intended, but in the little things that happened anyways, God was there. Unremarkably, sometimes unnoticeably, blessing the things that were going on around me and all of us. Abiding in Christ means working at being aware of those moments, being attentive to where God is at work in our lives as we look backwards, as well as in the present moment. Abiding in Christ means trying to find opportunities as well to be grateful for what God's love is doing in our lives. Abiding in Christ means recognizing that things are not always right. That perhaps we make mistakes and need to ask for forgiveness and turn away and accept that forgiveness. That we need to rely on God and one another. Abiding in Christ means being alongside others who are also working to abide in Christ. As we mutually support and grow together supporting one another as we do so, sharing the load. So if we abide in Christ like Philip, we will find that in the love of God, the most extraordinary things can happen. As nourished by the love of God, we will bear much fruit. Let us stand to declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and for all people according to their needs. Let us pray to the Lord God Almighty, in whom we live and move and have our being. Father, we want to produce good fruit in abundance. Nurture us as branches of the true vine. Train and prune us wherever necessary. And may our spiritual harvest have rich wine, wine of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Father, clearly we see around our world the tragic and expensive consequences of branches cut off from the true vine. We pray for a seeking after your truth and a desire to act rightly and justly in all areas of human society. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for those to whom we are linked by family, friendships or work. Especially, we pray for those separated from their loved ones or their home. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the parish of Charles Hill and especially for the local businesses along the Cricklewood Lane for their staff and for their customers in this challenging time. Lord, in your mercy. We celebrate with Maria as we pray for Emily and baby Oliver. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially for Nick, Seamus, Bridget, and all those known to you alone. May they find healing in the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Among them, Judy Kong, Lee Mallox, and in the year's mind, Emily King, Joseph Knight, William Brown, Barbara Homer, John Norris, and Edna Bell. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Philip, J James, 
and all your saints. We commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please, from your places, do offer one another a sign of peace. And to you at home, be encouraged by our peace being shared with you. And do share it with one another in the comments. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right, give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness 
while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, so our Saviour has taught us, each in our mother tongue. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Take this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. 
Now, for those of you at home, if by any just impediment one does not receive the sacrament of Christ's body or blood, they should be instructed that if you do truly repent of your sins and steadfastly believe that Jesus Christ has suffered death upon the cross for you and shed his blood for your redemption, earnestly remembering the benefits you have thereby received and giving God hearty thanks. Therefore, you do eat and drink these gifts and body and blood of our Savior Christ profitably to your soul's health, although you do not receive the sacrament with your mouth. And so join with us as we draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life, grant us to walk on in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Notice this week, um, the, we will be uh, having our nine o'clock this evening on Zoom for anybody who wants to join us for that. Uh, and then on Tuesday and Thursday, we'll have a contract on Facebook. Wednesday, Wednesday prayer um, at 12 o'clock again on Facebook. Um, looking uh, ahead, uh, Ascension Day is coming up. Uh, I think it will be on your, uh, the back of your bits of paper. Uh, it's uh, not this coming Thursday, but the Thursday after. I, it's the Thursday, but I'm not sure that that's right. Um, also coming up is our annual meetings are on the 23rd of May. Um, that's our Sunday morning at 11.30, so thank you for the main service. Um, you can either attend in person, so you come to the service and then stay the meeting afterwards, or um, we, uh, you can join us on Zoom. Um, the annual meetings are... Um, we the presentation the reports, um, and there's also the election of PCC members. So, there will be three. We have a cycle now where we elect three new PC members each year for three year terms. If you would be interested in standing for a three year term on the PCC, Please do consider it. Speak to perhaps one of the church wardens or myself or somebody else who's on the PCC to find out more about it. Um, it is a good opportunity to get involved in uh, what we're doing and know uh, to make decisions about how and what we do going forward. Um, 
that's that. Saturday, uh, we will be beginning a uh, yoga course. Well, we, Teresa will be running it. Teresa sat in the front row. She's going to wave to uh, If you would like to participate, this is really very fun to be doing this to help raise money for All Saints, but also to help us get a bit more active after having spent many months locked down. Um, so it's going to be by Zoom. So you can do it from the comfort and security of your own home, um, privacy. Um, but she will be uh, she'll be running that from next Saturday. The it's a six six, six week beginner. Uh, she it's a fifty pound um, fee, but uh, I think there's a a waiving of the fee for any NHS staff. Um, so if you're interested, you can email Teresa or um, or just speak to her outside um, after the service. Um, as long as you're in groups of less than six. Um, uh, there's something else, was there? Quiz is going to be on the 21st um, of May or in the evening. If you would like to join in with that on Zoom, please do speak to Glynis or myself. It's been a great thing to be involved in that uh, over, the, um, over the last few months. And I'd also like to say thanks to Nico, who's been playing the organ for us this morning. And uh, it's been wonderful to have you with us. I can't actually see him because he's behind a pillar or I'm behind a pillar. But uh, thank you for, for, for uh, accompanying us in this morning's service. Please stand. The Lord be with you. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you.